Let's talk about the second mapping algorithm when it comes to associating a tag with a block in a cache. This, well, we talked last lesson about the fully associative cache. And the fully associative cache basically said, I've got a block that I've loaded from memory, I can put it in any line of the cache that I want to. Any line. The, the, the search mechanism will handle finding or identifying exactly what line we're looking for. Now, the really cool thing about that was that you don't have any thrashing. In other words, you don't have two blocks from memory battling to see if you can't, sh you know, if, to make sure that both of them can remain in the cache. Now, let's swing the pendulum all the way to the other side. We started out with a block can be stored in any line of the cache. Now let's talk about what happens when we specify exactly which line of the cache we're going to store a block in. This is called direct mapping. It's the direct mapping algorithm. Now, whenever it comes to, well, let's go ahead. This is, this is going to be a little ugly, um, but let's go ahead and try this anyway. I'm going to make a cache. And I'm going to take a lot more room for this cache than I did for the cache for fully associative. So what we're going to do is we are going to have, uh, how about eight lines for our cache. Now remember that the general organization of the cache is that it is divided into two pieces, right? You have the portion where the tag goes, and then you have the portion where the block goes. Now, with the example that I used last time, I said, okay, we are going to have two word ID bits. And remember, the two word ID bits, and I'll draw this up on the board in just a moment, but the two word ID bits, those would specify on the least significant bit side what the offset into the block was. So if I had three word ID bits, I'd have eight patterns of ones and zeros, so my block size would be eight. Four word ID bits would specify a block size of 16. So we are going to, for our example, just have two word ID bits. And so these least two significant bits will be 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So those are my, my word offset. Now, Something that's different about the direct mapping than the fully associative is that we also have to number all the lines of our cache. Now I have eight lines up here. That's a pretty small number, but I'm not going to draw all the lines that you might see. Um, I worked with a, a MIPS processor a number of years back that had 32 lines, and that's the smallest cache that I've ever worked with, 32 lines. Uh, not going to do 32 lines up here. Let's just stick with eight. So let's number them, and we're going to number them in binary, and you always start counting from zero, so we'll have zero, 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 and then zero, zero, one. So this right here is the line number. And then 010, 011, 100, 101, 110, and then 111. So we have all the possible combinations of ones and zeros used to identify the lines. So with direct mapping, we have a power of two number of lines. Now, how are we going to store something? Well, remember, let's just go ahead and design, you know, so we have our full address. And we're going to use the same number of bits we used for our example last time. Just 12 bits, I know, pretty small. But we're going to use our example of 12 bits. And we're also going to, like we did last time, we've got our word ID bits. And there are two bits there. All right. Now, if I had changed that, I would have had a different number of columns here, right? Now... Remember, this is the block ID. Now, in the case of direct mapping, well, let's, let's go back to fully associative. In case of fully associative, our tag was equal to our block ID. Remember that the tag is used in order to determine what the block ID is. Now, what happens here whenever it comes to direct mapping is we divide the block ID into two pieces. We have a line ID, and then the remaining bits become our tag. Now this means 
that whatever pattern of ones and zeros we have for our full address, the bits that are in these three positions, and, and for our, because we have eight lines, we are going to need three bits for our example. All right. So whatever pattern of ones and zeros here specifies exactly which line you're going to find it in. And then we use the tag, or the remaining bits from the block ID, we use that as our tag. Now, what this does for us is, yes, every address you will always find it in exactly the same location every time, every time. Regardless of how long or you know, how many times things are replaced, you will always find a specific address or that block always in a specific line. And what that means is it makes it really fast. Direct mapping is really fast because all you have to do, you don't have to check the whole cache to see if your block's in it. You just check the line where you're looking for it. And the tag has fewer bits to do the compare, so it's cheaper. So all you have to do is just simply compare the fewer bits of the tag with the bits that are in that line of the cache for that tag and see if they equal. It's fast, it's cheaper, but guess what? Well, we'll get to the guess what? We'll get to the problem in just a minute. Let me do an example or two first. So uh, let's say that I have a, the processor, once again, we're talking 12 bits, right? So the processor has decided that it wants what's an address, how about 35C, okay? We convert this to binary. We've got 35C. All right. Now what we're going to do is we are going to divide this guy up. So we've got our word ID bits. So these are our word ID bits, right? So we know that when we, when we, when we, when we do put the block in, that it's going to be in this first column. But then we take the next three bits, and this specifies the line. Which line is it going in? And we see that 111 means that if I'm grabbing something from address 35C and its buddies that encompass the whole block, guess what? It's always going in this bottom line. And this tag right here is what's going to be stored there. So we've got 0011010. Now, fewer bits, right? So right now I've only got seven bits there as opposed to the 10 bits. So there's fewer bits to do a compare. That's faster. Plus, I'm only going to have to check the line that's specified. I automatically know where to go to see if I'm going to have that block in there. And so we load that block, 3C5D2915. I just made up some data elements, right? All right. So... Whenever I'm going to grow, when, so when the processor asks for that, the cache goes to that line. If the tag does not match, guess what happens? Well, what happens is that the processor goes out to main memory, grabs the block, loads it, and if there was something in there, there's no replacement algorithm. Just throw it out. Guess what? No replacement algorithm also makes direct mapping cheaper because you don't have to have all that hardware in order to perform the replacement. So all you do, yeah, it was there, throw it out. All right, let's do another example real quick. How about 0x, how about uh, D92, all right? So we convert that, we get D9 and then two, all right? Now, we do the divisions, so there's our word ID. We know that the word ID identifies that it's going to be in the third column. And then we grab the line, which the line ID is going to be 100, so we know it's going to be stored in this line. And so there's nothing in there right now, so we store the tag 1101100. So there's our tag. We don't need to worry about those bits. That's identified by the line number. And then we go out to memory and we get something. I don't know, how about uh, BA2B5312, all right? And so that D92 identifies this 53. 35C identifies at an offset of zero this 3C. 
All right. So that's how, that's how a direct mapping cache works. And in fact, you can see that we'll populate this eventually, but since every single line has a specific number, a specific line it goes to, there's some lines that may not even get something filled. So no replacement algorithm, faster, cheaper, right? Uh, the cheaper and quicker searching, so there's another benefit. But the drawback, what if two lines are thrashing? What if two blocks in the, not two lines, excuse me, let me try that again. What if two blocks are fighting for the same line? It just so happens that they're spaced out appropriately or spaced out exactly the same amount in memory that one block gets loaded and then the next block is needed and it throws out the first block and then it needs the other block and it throws and you go back and forth and that thrashing seriously takes away per from performance. Now, how far away do blocks need to be separated? Well, what is the next address or what's the next block that shares that same address? Well, notice that you change these patterns right here. If you just change the word ID bits, that's just going to identify which offset into the block we're looking at. So that's not going to cause thrashing. So if you change these lower five bits, that'll change the line. What is the next value that has that same pattern of ones and zeros for the line ID specifically? Well, it's whenever this block ID increments, or excuse me, not the block ID, that's the block ID, that tag portion of the block ID increments. Well, how far away is that? Well, right now I have got five bits identifying the word ID and the, uh, and the line ID, which means there are two to the fifth or 32 locations between those two. So for this case where I have a really small cache, this, you know, very few lines, just eight lines, that means that every 32 addresses, we loop around. So, so you go through, you know, address all zeros, and then as you increment, you go through all of this. And then when you get to the address 11111, that's this last element here. And then address 32, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, loops back around up to here. So every 32 addresses, we're going to loop around. So if you have two blocks that are separated by exactly that much that happen to also sh that happen to be used actively at the same time, they are going to thrash. Now, what does that mean in terms of of the number of lines that are sharing, or excuse me, a number of blocks that are sharing a line? Well, that's the number of pattern in ones and zeros for these bits that are remaining over for the tag. So I've got seven bits, which means for a 12-bit address space, 4K, 7 bits, 128 different patterns of ones and zeros for those 7 bits. There are 128 lines that are sharing this, excuse me, try it again. There are 128 blocks that are sharing this line. 128 blocks that are sharing this line, well, that's a lot. How can we improve that? Well, we can make more lines in the cache that will help us. But still, we've got the, the benefits. Fast, cheap, right? Drawbacks, there is a really good chance we're gonna have thrashing. All right, no, no replacement algorithm is needed, makes it cheap. Quick and easy uh, search, makes it cheap and fast. Well, there you go. The next one we're going to talk about is set associative. And what set associative does is it takes the benefits of associ fully associative and the benefits of direct, tries to combine them in some sort of a balanced manner.